How David, are you? I'm well. <laughs> I can't believe that we're finally actually talking I about know. May 6 and 7 of this year, where we're going to be finally collaborating on finally. this incredible piece called Every Good Boy Deserves Favor. Which is a, a clever name mm -hmm. because it, it describes the note lines on the staff mm -hmm. uh, going from the, the bottom to the top. Mm -hmm. Every E, good, G, boy, B, D, deserves favor. Now, in a F for favor, in America, we know it as every good boy deserves or does, does fine. fine. Does fine. And someone told me at work that they had deserves fudge. <laughs> I've heard that, so they think there are a few, but my, mine growing up was every good boy does fine. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's, it, it's a construct because uh, you know, we know it uh, 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 growing up as learning the note names, but mm -hmm. it's really um, a double entendre for this because in this, in this case it talks about um, the role of, of curring favor, mm -hmm. of pleasing someone. In this case it's the government. Uh, one of the cellmates in this in these in this two-person cell is a political dissident, mm -hmm. and he's trying to um, you know he has to weigh whether or not he's going to uh, obey the government or whether he's just going to capitulate on the sake for, for of his son, who is a little boy who's suffering because of his of his actions and not having a father. But it's also uh, another cellmate in there um, who has to please a psychiatrist mm. uh, the, or the uh, the prison psychologist to sort of convince him am I sane am I not sane and he could have his freedom if he just admits that he's he doesn't hear an orchestra exactly and in this, in this case the title the, the musical reference has a completely different alternate meaning uh, it's, it's very clever the the pairing with the uh, Shostakovich is is so perfect because I think it really sets the stage for you know just the, one of the all-time great symphonic works that really ties in all of those same themes, right? Very, very popular symphony, Symphony Number no. Five by Dmitri Shostakovich, mm -hmm. and it, it's it was Shostakovich's response, and, and he kind of says this almost in a sarcastic way uh, to just criticism just criticism from the Stalinistic regime, who was putting its thumb down on all artists, writers mm -hmm. and painters and composers. And you had to toe the line. You had to write work that was officially sanctioned by this artistic committee. And, and it's, it's not un dissimilar to the uh, blacklisting in Hollywood mm -hmm. in the 1940s. And it, it, this was his way not only to get back into the graces, because the audience reaction was stupendous, yeah but it also to give the subliminal message of defiance mm -hmm. and even poking fun mm -hmm. uh, at, at the government as well and then a heroic end. At, so it's, it's in my mind the most beautiful pairing of these two pieces that really basically talk about uh, uh, the importance of human uh, right for expression and dignity. Yeah. And, and I think what, what people will see too when the, the character who's actually hearing and leading the orchestra is a world-class tri triangle player. Right? <laughs> yeah, you're talking about one of the two, two characters in the play yeah. who, yes, who, who plays the triangle quite virtuosically. And, uh, but, you know, there are other characters other than the two people in the play as well. Yeah. There's a psychologist. Mm -hmm. uh, there's um, one of the uh, cellmates' uh, child is in school, and there's a relationship between the teacher and the child, and um, the child coming to terms with that his father is a dissident, a political right. dissident. Right. And um, it's poking fun at the government mm -hmm. uh, and, and the way that they make decisions in a kind of a capricious, single-handed way. And uh, there's, there's so many layers to yeah. this. There's humor, yeah. uh, there's sarcasm, there's satire. Um, but there's also, uh, uh, I think, a, 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 a serious quality that addresses the question that we were talking about of whether or not people and, and, and governments and, and a political system have a right to, um, to make a decision based upon their own, their own values. Right. It's kind of amazing how uh, relevant the, the play actually is. And uh, one of the things that, that I, I love about uh, this particular work is also the way the audience can be taken down a different road when they're what the, opposed to what they are used to when they attend the symphony or what they're used to when they attend the theater. 
and we're taking these two worlds, they're melded together, and then you have these beautiful chunks of time where you go into what's in this character's head, but you're quietly hearing all of the music. It's beautifully crafted, don't you think? Uh, absolutely, and, and our Machiavellian plan is that people <laughs> who have never been to the symphony but are big fans of the Katuit Center will come and see the symphony for the first time and be taken out of their perception of what theater is. Yeah. And the same thing as well, people will see actors and, in, and by the way, we should talk a little bit about um, the director and how we found Mary and these wonderful actors. Right, well, Mary Arnault has, uh, uh, she's directed a lot of plays around the Cape mm -hmm. uh, for years. And she and her husband, Andy, who is the set designer uh, for this show, um, had a theater company in New York. Uh, they're seasoned, you know, veteran uh, director, actor, you know, theater folk. And uh, Mary was just immediately drawn to the story, and I thought of her instantly <laughs> as the choice for the director. And um, in the audition process, we've actually pulled together six actors, and I believe that five of the six of them have been on the stage at Katuit at one point or another. Right. And uh, they're just phenomenal. Uh, yeah. So it, it ties in our local acting community with the members of the Cape Symphony, uh, for this special event. I mean, there's no way that I could have done this without you. There's no way that we could have done this without the center because of your expertise and your history with those actors. So, well, thank you, and, and I appreciate the opportunity. And and, and I agree. You know that that um, we have such a great opportunity here to share a, a different approach to to what we both do. And I don't think people realize as, as well that you're, you're right, people like Mary um, and a lot of people who come to the Cape and have very large national experiences, mm -hmm. you know, working in New York, working mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. I think people underestimate how much mm -hmm. experience and talent lies on the Cape. I'm amazed every day that you, you never know where someone has been, <laughs> what they've done, yes. what the previous lives were, uh, and then as you said, um, you know, I, I run a, a community-based arts organization, having spent 25 years in the, the big league record business and, and in that whole New York art scene. And I am constantly just moved and blown away by the quality of the artistic expression right here on the Cape. It, yeah. It's immense. Both, both artists and audience. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It, very sophisticated. Very sophisticated. Yeah. Yeah. And so, in fact, we should talk a little bit about this. This idea of freedom of expression has mm -hmm. inspired a festival. It has. And uh, in the early days of, uh, of talking about uh, presenting this work, mm -hmm. um, we said, wouldn't it be great if around the same time we could have all kinds of cultural organizations or people, anyone, who can participate in a discussion of what does freedom of expression mean? Right. What does it look like? Right. Uh, what's important about it? Yes. And so what came out of that is a grassroots festival mm -hmm. called the Freedom of Expression mm -hmm. or Art Spring Cape Cod. Right. Where the theme is freedom of expression. Right. It's a grassroots festival. I think now there are about 40 or 50 different events signed up and there's a, a website. People can go on. It's free to participate. You just have to do whatever work you're going to do during a specific time frame which I believe is April 27th through May 7th or 8th, some, something around there. You can go on to the, online to artspring.org. Artspringcapecod.org. Right, And get right. more information about it. Yeah. And uh, there's all kinds of, there, there are staged readings. Oh. Um, we're working on um, organizing a performance of Terry Riley's NC uh -huh. uh, that will happen at the, the theater. Uh, this concert that we're talking about now is really the genesis of the whole festival and uh, I'm just I'm really excited and, and proud of the the whole artistic community on Cape Cod for kind of jumping on this bandwagon. Well you know I it, it almost seems like um, an impossible task to bring arts organizations together we all like to play in our sandbox separately mm -hmm. and for them to come together around a single idea and all of us leaving our egos and our our individual um, plans aside yeah. and coming together for one week. It's so exciting. Yeah. I'm really yeah. excited. Me too. So I think this is a ridiculously exciting program. Uh, we place the two pieces on our finale of our season on purpose because really you can't follow this concert with anything else. Yeah. It is so much emotion. 
particularly the symphony by Shostakovich, mm -hmm. it, it is one of the most accessible symphonies. It's, if not the most success, uh, accessible symphony that he ever wrote, probably almost any Russian composer wrote, except maybe for Tchaikovsky. Yeah, I, I, I think that people will, um, you know, when you think of the, some of the greatest moments of Beethoven yeah. that, that you hear on, on in that big, beautiful, you know, wonderful sound that everyone comes to think of. You know, there there's so many of those moments in the in the Shostakovich. It's a really, it, it's it's really a, a, a showpiece for the orchestra. E emotionally too, yeah. it takes you from the heights of yeah. ecstasy and and joy to the depths of despair and hopelessness, and then back up again. Mm -hmm. You know, and it it is just one of the most satisfying pieces for me to conduct as well as the orchestra to play. And audiences just love it. It was, it was a, such a huge hit when it first premiered. I can't remember the date it was pr premiered, but it was just it immediately entered into the, to the pantheon of great masterpieces. Yeah, and, and then uh, in terms of the other part of the program that no one's ever heard of, <laughs> for the most part, <laughs> uh, the fact of the matter is Tom Stoppard. Okay, and then and, and Andre Previn. So, you know, you have two of the most well known icons of the classical and jazz music world and theater that just come together. It, it's going to be a great, great, great uh, couple of nights. I can't wait.